I get asked a lot about what type of natural disasters we have here in Utah. Of course, an earthquake is probably the most uh, substantial and devastating, potentially devastating natural disaster that we could have. But wildfires is also another natural disaster that we would, uh, you know, really hate to have because unfortunately, a lot of the hillside that we have here in Utah up along the benches of the mountains um, is very hard to access. There's not a ton of water there. And if a wildfire were to break out in one of these areas, it could spread very rapidly and would be very hard to contain. So what we're talking about here today is what's happening in Utah. We're going to be talking about wildfires. We're talking about Park City. We're talking about Heber City. And we're also talking about a crazy idea to build islands on the Utah Lake. So with that said, let's jump into it. What's up guys, it's Cody Steck, your favorite Utah realtor. So in this video, I wanna talk about a couple different things that's happening here in Northern Utah. We're gonna jump into my screen here and take a look at some of the problems with traffic in the Salt Lake Canyon roads. Now this is something that's been going on for a couple of months now, but it's actually in the interest of all of us for this to happen, even though there's gonna be some traffic delays with it. So this is talking about um, a fire or potential fire risk that there that there is in the canyons here in Salt Lake. So it says that crews took to Big Cottonwood, Little Cottonwood, American Fork, and Mill Creek Canyons this summer to start burying power lines in an effort to prevent a similar fire to the one mentioned here above that I skipped in the Uinta Wasatch Cache National Forest, a cornerstone to Utah's billion dollar recreation and tourism industry. Obviously these canyons get a lot of traffic. There's people going up and down every single day, hundreds, hundreds if not thousands of cars. And, um, you know, there's power lines that are out there and they say basically, hey, if these power lines get damaged because of an avalanche or because of a windstorm or something like that, they could possibly fall over, cause a spark and then spark a wildfire that could av absolutely devastate um, these areas. So that's why they're going in and they're burying these power lines underground or providing additional protective um, conduit over the top of them to protect them from this possibly happening. We're making sure that our system is not the cause of a catastrophe catastrophic wildfire, particularly in these areas that are close to urban wildland interface and also close to areas where our customers live, work, and place at Rocky Mountain uh, Power. The canyons are key places. Weather permitting, Rocky Mountain will be replacing segments of its overhead power lines with an underground conduit into the fall while upgrading the existing overhead systems to be more resilient to weather and environmental factors. So this is something that's really important. It obviously um, is something that needs to happen because if there was a wildfire in one of these canyons, which fortunately um, you know, we did have a we did have a fire in um, Parley's Canyon last year. I think that was last year, and uh, people were really worried about it. It was, a, you know, definitely a devastating thing. Um, fortunately, I don't think any buildings were lost in that. No, nobody was hurt with it. But that is a you know kind of a precautionary tale of what could possibly happen if there's a wildfire in these canyons. Fortunately, um, you know, over the years we haven't had any other major fires in the canyons, but um, they're taking preventative measures to make sure that doesn't happen going into the future. All right, let's talk about our next thing here, Park. City Resort introduces paid parking systems. So in this winter, Utah's largest ski resort, Park City Mountain, will undergo changes that will make it more expensive for patrons. With more than 4 million annual visitors to Park City, the Mountain Village base will now require parking reservations in the winter. If you've ever tried to go to Park City in the winter and go skiing or even just visit Main Street or anything like that, parking can be an absolute nightmare. This is not only because there's a lot of cars, but also with a lot of snow, you know, it kind of covers everything up. It's just dirty. It's hard to get into these parking spots. So they're now going to require parking reservations. For those who don't participate in winter sports uh, activities, the village base offers lodges complete with restaurants, shopping, and coffee. Now a visit will come also with an additional $25 cost for parking. Payment reservations will be implemented for Maine, First Time, and Silver King lots. Reservations need to be made for every day of the week. Free parking options come after 1 p.m. or if you have a car with four or more passengers. It's good to see that they're still allowing this. However, it just says free parking options, um, which means that it's probably going to be limited, right? They're going to say, hey, the first 20 cars with, uh, you know, four or more passengers park free, but then after that, everybody else is going to have to probably pay or park further away. Additionally, free parking will still be available at the Canyons Village Base area, High Valley, and on weekends at Park City High School. So this is good. You still have options for this. Luckily, these areas are not too far away from the actual ski resort. So there still is free parking options, but if you want to get closer uh, to, you know, the winter sport activities to the, to the base of the ski mountain, uh, you're looking at roughly $25 for parking. You can expect to be paying for any visits that fall between December 12th and April 2nd. The work, this resort is working with the city to encourage accessible transit to the resort, including a traffic circulation plan in the Mountain Village base.
So um, unfortunate news for some people, but I think it's actually ultimately a good thing because there's going to be people who are willing to pay for this and um, hopefully it'll encourage carpooling. It'll help encourage uh, less cars to be going into that area and, uh, you know, making the trip there just for one person to park for, you know, eight hours for the day or something. So I think it's ultimately, even though, hey, I don't want to pay 25 bucks for parking. I think ultimately um, it is a good decision overall. If you haven't heard about our newsletter, you can go down to the description box below. We are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of September for anybody who signs up between now and then you're going to get a free uh, ring doorbell or Nest thermostat of your choosing. Uh, if you, you know, for this giveaway, we're going to be basically doing a drawing for anybody who signs up and uh, we'll ship that out to you at the end of September after that drawing. So make sure to go sign up for the newsletter. We're going to be sending out emails probably about every other week. So you're only going to get maybe two emails a month um, at the most. It's going to be one email a week. We'll see where it goes, but this is something new that I'm starting up just to kind of keep people informed on what's going on. So if you're not always on YouTube, this could be another source uh, for you to get information about the Salt Lake City market and um, just stay up to date. Next up, Heber City, which is also like located close to Park City, has one of the highest rates of remote workers in the country. I thought this was pretty interesting um, report here. Nearly 15% of the population in Heber City uh, worked from home in the years prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and in 2020. And that places the town in Wasatch County among the top 10 cities in the United States for remote workers. Now they said this is actually prior and during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So it was at 15% now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's, you know, 25 or 30%. It's probably pretty high um, just because of everything that happened with that. Heber City actually ranks number seven behind these other cities right here. And they analyzed um, uh, 938 areas in the United States. I thought this was an interesting note right here. On average, 5.35% of jobs in the US cities are remote. This is actually quite a bit less than I would have um, expected. Uh, you know, if you just asked me, I would have said probably, you know, 15%, 10 to 15% was remote. Um, but there are actually, you know, 95, roughly 95% of jobs are actually on site. So remote working in US cities increased by 23.8% compared to pre pandemic levels. Washington DC, Colorado and Oregon have the highest proportion of remote workers and the lowest proportion are in Mississippi, Puerto Rico and Louisiana. A 2021 survey from TeamFlow ranked the state of Utah as fifth in the nation for the number of people who are working remotely. Overall, the company said it was surprised that on average in the first year of the pandemic, only one in 20 Americans that lived in cities worked remotely. So this kind of goes back to that 5% range uh, right here. Only one in 20 um, actually worked remotely. So pretty interesting study there. If you're working remote, Heber City is definitely a great place to live. It's kind of got that small town feel. It's um, in the mountains. I mean, you can go hiking or mountain biking, like right out your front door. Uh, you're only a short drive over to uh, Park City or a short drive to the airport or to downtown Salt Lake. It's really a great place to live. I mean, if I didn't work so much in Salt Lake, I might consider moving up there just because it's a really, really nice feel. Um, it is a little bit expensive compared to these other areas, but something worth considering if you're thinking about making a move here. Now, as we jump into this last article here, if you are thinking about making a move here to Utah, or you already live in the area and you want to buy or sell real estate, maybe invest in real estate or build a new home, make sure to reach out to me. I've had people from all across the world reach out saying, hey, I'm moving there because I'm working remote. Or I've had people uh, you know, who live here locally already and say, hey, I need to buy or sell real estate. And they ask for my help. I love it when you guys reach out and I can't wait to hear from you about your um, own personal um, lifestyle and goals and how I can help with that. So my information is here on the screen, call, text, or email anytime. I love hearing from you guys and cannot wait to, uh, you know, make that connection and see how I can really help you through that potential process. So last thing I want to talk about here is that after the state strikes the island idea, what's next in the effort to restore Utah Lake? So this is something I've covered in depth here on the channel before. Uh, you can find it on my channel if you're really interested. But basically, uh, there was this company or development group that basically had this idea to come into Utah Lake and uh, dredge up the bottom and use all of that material, uh, that dirt and stuff to actually build man-made islands in the middle of Utah Lake. A pretty crazy ambitious project. They ended up saying that, hey, a federal judge said, hey, this is actually unconstitutional and it could lead to major um, repercussions for this, uh, the Utah um, economy because of what would happen with this. So they just said, hey, basically this is not a great idea. We probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, it's going to you know, totally disturb the lake. It's going to change it from what it was and only change it into what people, you know, a select few amount of people want it to actually be. So they basically asked this idea, said, hey, it's unconstitutional, not going to happen. And so this article kind of covers what's next for the Utah Lake. If you don't know, Utah 
Crocodile Lake is really just a lake that kind of looks pretty. It's not really a lake that you want to like go boating on or anything like that because they have a lot of algae problems and um, you know it's just not the cleanest lake out there. It's not very deep um, so it looks great. You can go fishing obviously. Uh, there's people who fish on it or they go out and kayak or whatever. That's definitely an option but you know generally not the cleanest or best lake to go boating on or anything like that. There's a lot of better options within about an hour's drive of the Utah and Salt Lake Valleys. So with all that being said guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's something a little bit different than I normally do here on the channel, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, please consider sharing it with a friend or a family member, or maybe even a spouse who might also be interested in learning about what's happening here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and across the entire state for that matter. Um, it would really mean a lot to me. I'd really appreciate it. And I'd love to get this value out in front of other people as well. Don't forget to reach out to me if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate here in Utah. And with all that being said, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.